Okay, this is Math 1, Lesson 1.3.1. And in this lesson, what we're doing is introducing linear equations, how to graph a line. Um, so let me just kind of write over here what equation we use. And, and this video is dedicated to, like, what the different pieces mean. A lot of times we refer to this equation, y equals mx plus p. I will always refer to linear equations when graphing-wise is you need a starting point and you need a direction, okay? So for me, those are the two biggest things that we have to understand what they mean, okay? Now, this is also graphing lines where we have two variables. So let me highlight what those variables are. The variables are x and y. So those are the things that change, okay? As we change x, we get a y. And a lot of times we see those as ordered pairs. And I have other videos in this playlist that talk about finding the slope and so forth. But this video is dedicated to what does the equation mean. Okay, so you may want to watch graphing lines and, and finding slope and, and those other videos prior to watching this or, or after watching this, whatever works best for you. Then the two things that define starting point and direction is the starting point, you always got to start somewhere, and that's our B value. Okay, and then the other thing is the direction, and I'll underline that, that's this variable here, kind of ran out of colors there, okay. So let's kind of talk about a scenario. A local convenience store owner spends $10 on pencils to resell at a store. What is the equation of the store's revenue if the pencil sells for 50 cents, okay? First thing is, let's change the word revenue to profit. I think that's really what they want us to find. And profit, this is a, the business equation is equal to revenue, that's how much money you bring in, minus cost, how much money you spend on things. So profit is how much you make. That's what you get to keep. Also, you spend money on pencils. So in this case, we spent money, $10 on pencils. We sell them for a certain amount. And that difference is our profit. Okay. So notice... We spent money on pencils, so we start $10 in the hole. So they say, like, how much profit do I make? Well, before you even make money, you had to spend $10 in profit. So we're going to start at negative 10, okay? So that's our starting point. And a lot of times refer to that as your B, okay? And then from there, we say, okay, for every pencil we sell, we're going to make 50 cents. So if you think about it, we sell one pencil and we collect 50 cents. We sell two pencils, you collect a dollar. You sell three pencils, you collect a dollar fifty, and on and on we go. So we want to be able to build an equation. So the profit is what we start at, our cost, plus our revenue, how much we um, you know, bring in. Okay. So all I'm doing is kind of flipping the order here. Okay, what we sell. So in this case, and then really what I'm going to do is just to keep things consistent is I'm going to um, rewrite this in this order. Profit is we got to sell stuff, and then we have to, you know, account for how much we spent our cost, okay, our starting point. So I'm going to change that word again to, again, I'm just kind of playing with the words here, our starting point. Okay, now in this case, we started $10 in the hole. Okay, so, you know, how much money did I make tonight? Well, I lost $10 because I had to spend them on pencils. Now, we're spending $0.50. Cents. We're making that much for every pencil we sell, okay? So I'm going to use P for pencils, okay? And then I'm going to use, you know, I'm not even going to use variables this time. I'm just going to use symbols, okay? So that's how much money we make equals $0.50 cents for every pencil we sell, we started ten dollars. So here's my equation. So if I was to correlate this to y equals mx plus b, we can identify the different pieces here. As my starting point is my b, we can see my slope is 0.5. That's my direction. And notice our variables are, you know, p is the x, so we'll call that as our horizontal variable. And then my y is my profit, and then that's my vertical dimension. So I'm going to make a, a new graph here, and I'm going to kind of draw this out. Now, notice, I could use graph paper and so forth, and you probably will in your book, but I'm just going to sketch a graph and really understand what this means. So let's kind of 
do our lines here. So we have profit. Again, sorry for my handwriting because horrible at. And then this is how much we sell. Okay. Now we start at negative ten dollars. Here's zero. Here's let's say ten dollars. And for every so we start at negative ten, we haven't sold anything yet. Okay. Now the first question is, how many pencils do we have to sell in order to break even? So a lot of you are logically thinking, okay, so what's gonna what's this gonna look like? Well, if you sold ten pencils times fifty cents, you would this you know made five dollars. Okay, so that doesn't work. So we gotta sell twenty pencils. So it's gonna put over here. I'm put put in blue again. Twenty pencils, and then if we sold twenty pencils at fifty cents each, okay. So again, we're just taking 20 pencils times 50 cents each. That right there is equal to $10. So we made our $10 back. Okay. So notice that is my line. Okay. So a linear equation means it forms a straight line. Okay. Now again, we really don't go back in time. So we kind of start our domain starts at zero and goes this big. So pencils have to be bigger than or equal to zero. And we kind of talked about that in previous lessons. But we could sell pencils and pencils forever. Okay. Now the thing that we have to realize here is now we've established that we can kind of put some money in. So if that's ten or if that's twenty, this is ten pencils, this is thirty pencils. So again, this is the number of pencils sold. And this is how much money we're making. So we lost ten dollars. We're trying to get, let's say, up to ten dollars. Okay. At what point in time does that happen? Well, let's go ahead and put it on a graph. Okay. So if we come over here and turn on my calculator, I'm gonna go to y equals. I'm gonna plug in the equation. So again, the equation that we're using is y equals again dollars is equal to 0.5 of x. Call that the number of pencils minus the ten dollars we started at. Okay, so I put that into y equals so I hit right there. And we go to graph and we can see it right here. Now notice that looks a lot like my graph. Now a lot of people say, well it doesn't have the same angle. Well you have to look this is ten spaces, here's my ten spaces. So scales thing that we're gonna work on a lot in this semester. Okay. Is creating a graph with appropriate scale. Okay. Now let's go to this. Go second table right here and it gives you a list of values. So this is the number of pencils. Now if we scroll up here, let's start at zero pencils. We can see we're ten dollars in a hole. If we sold one pencil, we made fifty cents and we're only nine dollars and fifty cents in a hole. So as we scroll up, a lot of us predicted that if we sell, you know, there's ten pencils, now we're only five dollars in a hole. So we have to get all the way up to twenty pencils before we make our money back. So our starting point is negative 10. See that down here. And our rate of change is 50 cents for every one pencil. Okay, so if I write that as a fraction, is we have 50 cents for every one pencil. And that's that rate of change. And we have videos on that as well. Okay, and we're comparing dollars per pencil. So you know, when a rate of change is comparing two things. Okay. So notice here we have this. So now let's say let's say I sold 50 pencils. How can we do that? Well, we could just calculate our graph, but let's plug it in here. So I'm going to put y is equal to 50 cents times the number of pencils 50 minus 10. Okay. So let's plug it into your calculator. So I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go 0 0.50 times 50 pencils. Plug it in just like I see it. Minus 10 dollars. And we made fifteen dollars. So if we go over to fifty, and again my graph got a little bit out of here. So here's forty, here's fifty, and we can see this graph goes on and on forever. And then my points off my graph. If here's ten dollars, notice fifteen is going to be way up here. So that makes sense. So let's kind of see it in the table of values. Second so graph, and then we can scroll down to table of values. If I scroll all the way down to fifty, and take me a little bit here. This way it's a lot easier to use math. So counting, 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 scrolling. You know, we can see the same thing, $15. Okay. So we can kind of see this right here. So let me just take this real quick and show you that this graph goes forever. 
So I'm going to take all this and I shrink it down. Just give me a second here. Oh, computer didn't like that. Let's try it again. And uh, I'm going to group it. And this watch, if I make the graph smaller. And, you know, and here is our 40. Here's 50. Here's 60. And if we extend this line, you know, it goes on forever. So if we look at, you know, 50 pencils and we scroll up and put a point and we went up to $20, we can see right about 15 is where it's at. So that ordered pair right there is at 50 pencils. We have a profit of $15. Okay. So that's pencils per profit. And let's kind of see, and we see that's XY. Okay. So again, this video is illustrating what the different pieces of the equation mean, how they correlate to a real life scenario and things like that. Okay. So this is a good video to watch. And then for supplemental things, you can watch the rate of change and graph and align videos to go with this as well.